Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in. This is Winning Cures Everything. This is a Tuesday evening show. I am Christopher Giannini, and I'm rolling solo. This is going to be, I think, the standard for a little while. Um, Gary's going to do a couple of solo shows. I'll do a couple of solo shows. We'll come together, do a couple of live shows. And, uh, and this is what we're going to be putting out to you. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, forewarning for today, I have been up in the studio for about six hours trying to do this podcast. And you know me. I'm not the tech guy. And so I've done it twice. I've cocked it up twice because I don't know how to do anything right. That happens. Thankfully, Gary wired in, took him away from his family. It happens. Um, another note, this is the first time you've ever seen the microphone on this side of me. If you're watching on YouTube, because of the way I have to do the new setup, I don't like it. So if I feel a little uncomfortable, if I look a little uncomfortable, that's because this is not supposed to be here. It's supposed to be here. And it's messing with my brain. All of that going into the fact that this show, just warning everybody, not going to be show of the year probably, all right? I uh, All the topics I'm going to talk about today, except for one, are kind of downers. So just hang with me, ride with me, and uh, and we'll have a good time with it. Before we get started, three notes of topic that we've got to start with. WinningCuresEverything.com is the website. Gary has worked his tail off to put that thing together and get it looking good. Go check it out. That's where you'll find all the information about us. Anytime we do something new, anytime we're doing something or planning something, it'll all be there. Um, go there. He works real hard on that. Other website we got is Sportsbook for you. Whoa, whoo, let's get it. Sportsbookreview.com slash NCAAF. That is where you go for all your college football gambling uh, needs and situations. Right now, why don't you hit the college basketball stuff up? It's tournament time. The guys over there know what they're doing. They're really good. We got more college basketball content that you can digest in a day. Go check them out. We appreciate it. Hit up SBR live at, uh, at, at um, YouTube. That's the thing that we're on all the time. And, uh, and check them out. They've got the NFL guys still doing. Gary and I are still doing our show. Hockey's rolling along. The NBA and the, and the college basketball guys like I talked about are, are kicking like karate. We appreciate our partnership with SBR and uh, want to give them a shout out. Lastly, I have a personal shout out I'd like to say, okay? This is just a personal thing for me to folks who follow me on Twitter, okay? Uh, someone that, that I follow and know and have communicated mildly back and forth with, but they're an important part in my life. Um, father passed away, Gina Grad from the Adam Carolla Show, and, uh, and, and, and she had to handle the burden of trying to bury her father and do all this stuff uh, totally on her own, okay? And, uh, and, and that's, that's a tough thing for somebody who's already struggling in Los Angeles. She's trying to get married. She's trying to save up for a house. Um, and, uh, and, and then, then she had the, the, the burden of trying to bury her father. And I just shared out the link asking folks for help. And, man, I'm, I'm not kidding you when I tell you how overwhelmed I was. Now, this is a person that I kind of know who, who needs some help. You people, for the most part, I would guess, don't know at all. If you do, you didn't need me to tell you she needed help. And I got so many DMs, a couple of tweets, but but mostly a lot of a lot of messages of folks saying, "Hey, I reached out, just wanted to let you know, and uh, and and I helped, and, and whatever." That means a lot. That goes a long way with me. Um, you'd be willing to help a stranger in a tough time just because somebody asked you to. So I will let you know this up front. I have incredible gratitude for you. I appreciate that. Second thing, I will never, ever uh, waste that influence, and and I will I will never take advantage of it. Okay. So wanted to get that part out of the way. We'll get into the show. Um, let's start with the one not terrible topic. Okay. Place I love. A thing I love, an event is happening in Cleveland. The draft is going forward. We got the okay. The NFL said we're showing up. We're coming. We are going to land and take over the uh, the shores of Lake Erie. 
just outside of First Energy Stadium, and I could not be more excited. Now, I'm in a little bit of a predicament. Man, I cannot talk. I've tried to do this show too many damn times. Earlier, I had the books fall on me. It scared the hell out of me. This is not my day. Anyway, do I stay or do I go? So you know me. I've been, I've been trying to get a break. I've been trying to get a vacation. I've been trying to just get the hell out of Memphis for just a little bit. And I thought the draft was going to be a perfect opportunity for it. Eh, this is not going to be one of those drafts like we had on Broadway in Nashville where people are just asshole to elbow. Very limited access. Doesn't cost anything. It's free. That means there's a lot of people that's going to try to be getting in. Do I go all the way to Cleveland? Be in the midst of downtown where the NFL descends upon the city with a really good chance of maybe not being able to get in the door. Is it worth it to still be there? I'm trying to figure that out. I'm struggling with that internally. I don't know if I should go or not. Um, I'd love to see my friends. I'd love to be able to go and be a part of it. If I can't be in there, it's going to be sad. It's going to be frustrating. The other part is the big ticket that I'd want to try to get into is always Thursday night, day one, first round of the draft. But see, that's going to be one I'm going to miss no matter what I'm doing or where I'm at. Because the WCE boys and the West Lot Pirate boys, our friends from Northwestern, always do. Well, they've done it three years in a row. I kind of sold out in 2019, didn't come. Um, had a prior engagement that I felt obligated to go to, and I enjoyed myself, but I missed it. We always do the first round live on Zoom. We we I, Gary and and Sam does all the technical stuff between the two groups. They put it out into the ethos for everyone to see. I don't know how that works. I just sit in front of a camera and I dance for the people. That's this is what I do. Obviously, I'm doing the show for the third time now tonight. Um, so I would miss the first round anyway. Now, I don't know how much influence the folks out in the in the in the ethos have. But I'm trying to convince those four other gentlemen to where if we can't go all to Cleveland, let's all go somewhere and let's do this draft thing in person together, live stream. Let's get a cabin. Let's get a lake house. Let's get a beach house. Let's get something just to get out and get away and escape and cook and booze and howl at the moon and just just let go for a little bit. And I run into a little bit of a problem. See, see, you guys know me and you know Gary real well. I, I make no bones about it. I, this is not a self-deprecating thing. I am never going to be accused of being father of the year. Okay, I will tell you this. When I take my family on vacation, there's not a dad on the planet that can hang with me. Okay, I do it right and I immerse myself in my children and my family. Mm, Monday through Friday, well, I guess every day of the week I'm, I'm here and I work real hard and I make sure nobody hurts them. Okay. But I'm, but I know that I'm not dad of the year. Those other four, man, they, they, they really might be. Okay. They all got wives and they all got a, a kids and, and they, they are really, really, it's not as easy to get them to leave their family and their situation to come, <laughs> to come hang out with me. So, I don't know if there's some guilt y'all could throw their way, but uh, Sam, Scuzz, John, uh, Gary, yeah. If we could convince them to do that, that'd be a good time. And y'all would like the content, right? Wouldn't it be cool to be coming from a cabin somewhere? I'd enjoy it. Y'all would enjoy it. Now I'm going to transition on. The rest of the show, going to be a downer. If you're having a tough day, you you know, listen, I'm going to try to make it as fun as I can. But these are some tough topics we got to hit, okay? Deshaun Watson has been labeled right now by one of his accusers in the lawsuit as a serial predator. Okay. We now are up to 22 different women have come forward with accusations. 14 different lawsuits as of Tuesday evening. This is not good. This is not a good look at all. The last time Gary and I really spoke about this, we were one accuser. And, and it was very much a he said, she said, and she thought she had some evidence, but we didn't really have access to any of that evidence. Um, and I didn't know where this was going to land. We're now at 14 lawsuits. I, th- I, think, I think that's pretty damning. Okay. Here's, here's the world in which I live in. All right. 
at one point in time, we tried to push in our country, believe all women. And not to not to ruffle any feathers, but but I don't believe all anybody. All right. I just don't do that. I know what people are. People are bastards and people will lie and cheat and steal to get ahead. OK, they just will. But but I also live in a world where just because somebody looks like a spectacular person does, doesn't mean they always are. I, I'll never stand on the soapbox and pound my chest for anyone to say there's no way they could have done it because I've been burned before. OK, we're we, we're going to talk about it a little bit here later. But Gary and I hit it deep earlier. You know, I, I, I worshiped Les Miles. I love that. That man was a father to me. He didn't know that. But but he but he was he you know he was he was one of the most important men in my life during one of the most influential times in my life and uh, and now to to see you know creepy kind of a scumbag maybe you know I, I sure hope we don't have any evidence we just we just have a lot of a lot of creepiness that he actually tried to assault women but you know it, it didn't make it an easy pill to swallow. And, and I'll tell you the one that threw me for the biggest loop of all growing up was America's dad. Man, I worshiped Bill Cosby. I love this man. You're talking about a guy who, who I, I didn't have a father. When that guy was America's dad, he, he was my dad. And, and I'm not equating what, what Deshaun Watson's being accused of with rape, but nobody on the planet thought Bill was capable of doing something like that. And never a bad word had ever been said about him. And, and deep down inside, he was a monster. And so that's where I, I'm very cautious to say, you know, there's no way Deshaun did this. I don't believe he did this because nobody's ever said anything bad about him before. Mm, just because nobody's ever said anything bad about you doesn't mean you, you don't have a monster inside you. All right. The other side of that coin is this. There's, there's also a world which I think it's almost impossible that None of these women are telling the truth, but there is a world in which some of them are not telling the truth. Okay. I, I, I live in that world as well. And I see that, but it's tough. I think Watson's going to have a fight on his hands. I, I'll tell you this. Any of you who are saying this is just a shakedown because it's all civil and none of these are criminal charges. Don't understand sexual assault. They don't understand um, how, 80 to 90 percent of these things happen in real life for everybody. This is not just a Deshaun thing. Um, and, and then the other side of the coin is is people saying that he never had any problems until he asked to be traded from the Houston Texans. And then uh, like as if somehow the Texans are making this happen. I don't I don't know what world you live in to where you think that somebody would do that. But but I can't imagine it. How are the Texans benefiting here? Because at some point in time, Goodell's going to have to get involved. And when he does, Watson's going to go on the commissioner's exempt list. You know what that means? That, that list is a list of players, which means you don't get to play football. But the team still has to pay you. How in the hell is that a win for the Texans? Oh, well, they, I guess they get to keep Dijon. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I want. A guy who hates it here, and I have to bench, and I have to still pay. Th that, that's not a win for anybody. So I don't believe that the Texans owners or somebody else, you know, with the organization tied to it are trying to make this happen. All right. I'm not I'm not that naive. You're not going to get me to convince me to, to buy that. So I do think Watson's in some trouble. And I think he's uh, he's going to have a long way to go to try to clear his name. Moving on. We'll hit the LSU stuff. F. King Alexander is the uh, was the president of the University of Oregon, Oregon State University. Let's say the school right, Chris. Um, was the president of Oregon State University. As of today, he resigned. They did an internal investigation themselves into basically trying to figure out what did he know, what happened at LSU. And, and, and Les Miles did some things that were wrong. Not, not questionable. We have evidence. We have enough people saying this happened while I was there and, and that I believe him. You know, he staffed the, uh, the football facility with big blue blondes. All right. That, that is sexual discrimination. You just can't, you can't do that. He did a lot of things that were pretty, pretty strong, creepy level. Okay. He did those things. We, we don't have evidence at all of sexual harassment. That, that, that evidence just isn't there. Now, the reason that evidence isn't there is because Joe Oliva, athletic director at the time, 
and president, Mr. Alexander, both grossly, grossly understaffed the Title IX department at LSU. And the, the victims, the accusers, were sent to people that did not help them, swept this under the rug. Some of these people we haven't heard from or seen or can't find anymore. We don't know if they threatened them. We, we, don't, we, don't know, we don't know anything. Now, I would like to know the truth. I am an LSU fan. Now, I got a lot of friends who are Ole Miss fans and who are Bama fans, and they all hate LSU. And they want to know the truth, too, just so they can take pop shots. But they're taking their pop shots without knowing the truth. They don't need the truth. I want to know the truth because I, because I, I cared about this man. I, I followed him. I trusted him. I believed in him. Now, A, shame on me. Don't put your faith in people, okay? Don't put your faith in them. We're, we're, we're scumbags. All right, and we're all going to let you down at some point in time. But at the same time, I, I'd like to know, you know, is this just a guy who was creepy and who was, you know, caught up in being pervy, or did he actually assault women? Because those are n- not acceptable, but two very different things. You know, I, I could, I mean, I know a lot of people that I, I still associate with and call them friends, and I love them, that are creepy and kind of pervy but but if you assault women we're probably not going to have a friendship that's going to be able to sustain the hard things that I'm going to tell you when I think when I see you and I'm around you and 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 it's I think those are two very different things and I I would personally just like to know as an LSU fan I don't know that we're ever going to find out okay it's a it's an ugly thing I think it's strange that Mr. Alexander resigned after Oregon State did their investigation and met, and I think they were going to fire him anyway. Um, you know, but, but yeah, you, you grossly understaffed Title IX. This is, this is unacceptable. Joe Oliva tried to make himself look like a hero because he wanted to fire less anyway, even though he said, we'll lose in the court of law. We'll lose in the court of law, but, but we'll win in the court of opinion because all he cares about is the mob. And if I make the mob happy, then we've won. That's not always right. You can't just be willing to make the mob happy just to just to satisfy your situation because that means you're throwing somebody under the bus. You're throwing somebody to the mob for them to destroy, and that's just not okay. But a proper investigation was absolutely warranted, and you men, didn't have Title IX staffed up. You men didn't provide a safe place for these women to go. You men didn't do proper investigations, and the people under you didn't do proper investigations. So, yeah, I don't think y'all should be administrators at universities anymore, and I don't think that's a tough ask. I don't know. We'll we'll get out of the the sad down topics, and we're going to get into something else. There's, There's nothing sad here. This is... This is just angry, red-ass Chris. I was all excited about Major League Baseball starting up. Okay, April 1st is right around the corner. Opening day is inching closer. And, and I hit the old interweb up to start doing a little more research, doing a little more digging. See, I, I like to make my picks for, you know, division winners and World Series winners and who, who I think is going to make the playoffs. I also pick Cy Youngs. I also pick MVPs. And, and I like doing those things. Now, if you know me, you listen to this show, if you're watching the solo show, you damn sure know enough about me to know this. I don't pick chalk. Okay. I don't ever bet chalk. I think people who bet chalk, uh, people who only play favorites, let me tell you something. Those are people who put mayonnaise on everything. All right. And they're also the same people that only eat pepperoni pizza because you just got no taste. You, you just, you've got no delicate taste to you at all. You're, you're just so, you're just so numbed and you're just so covered in filth that you just have to pound on something gross just to, just to feel anything there. You sell your soul to these awful, huge teams and organizations and just say, well, this is who, this is one of the best. So I'm just going to pick them. Yeah, it's boring. Okay. But there's nothing exciting. There's nothing fun. There's no risk in that. All right, that's no, it's nothing, nothing. You know what is fun? Taking dogs, taking long shots, taking chances. That's what I do. And that means that means guys who bet chalk win a lot. And guys like me win rarely. I'm okay with that. 
I can look at myself in the mirror and I can go to bed at night. I, I like being the guy that bets on the long shot. I like being the greater fool. I always have been. And I kind of embrace it. And I appreciate it. Last year, last year I hit both Cy Young winners. I, I kind of didn't think there was a chance of that, by the way. And, uh, and I was really, really proud of it. So I'm doing my research. I'm doing my digging. And what do I find in Major League Baseball news today? A bunch of rich boys from Los Angeles decided to take their stimulus money because they don't need it and buy a billboard in Boston trolling Red Sox fans, thanking them for sending them Mookie bets. There's a couple of layers to this. Layer number one is, is you know why you have to buy a billboard in other cities? To, to You think you're mocking these other fans. But, but really, you're just showing the ineptitude and the, and the flaws of your own organization. you got to go out and get guys like Mookie Betts, stars from other players that other organizations draft, develop, grow, mold. And you got to get them to come to your place because you're not good at those things. And so all you can do is collect stars. That's all you can do. You, you're just a town of mercenaries. Nobody's from L.A. that's anything great at all. Everybody came there from somewhere else. Okay, so so I think that's kind of I think that's kind of sad. I think that's kind of pathetic. All right, that's what I think it is. Clayton Kershaw, your one homegrown talent that you've had for years. You know what he's known for? You know for being a choke artist in the playoffs. Okay, that's what he's known for. And what they have to do? They have to go get Savior Mook and get him to come to L.A. Get the get, get the Red Sox to trade him to the y'all so you can win. Congratulations. You feel good about yourself? I guess you do. You spent your money, little rich boys, on a billboard to try to mock some other folks that you don't know. Yeah, okay. I'm all for a little trash talk, but there's nothing worse than a bad winner. There's nothing worse than somebody who spent 40 years chasing a dream. One of the highest payrolls in baseball and just can't sniff it. Just can't, can't get over that hump of winning a championship because your best homegrown player is a choke artist, the guy you depend on the most. So you go out and you get a bunch of mercenaries. Congratulations. Congratulations. This is what I know about baseball. Now, A, the Dodgers are, are the best team this year. They, they went out and got more stars. They went out and got one of those Cy Young winners to add to that staff. They went out and got more hitting. They got more stars. Okay. All right. Here's, here's what I know. I believe that karma is real. Okay. And I think the God of baseball is a fickle bitch. And I think she's coming for your ass. And so while I won't be betting the Dodgers, everybody who does is pissing their money away. Because you can give me all the stars you want. They're not going to line up. I can't tell you how it's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. I know this. It, it's not going to be a repeat. It's not going to be a run back. Okay? You fans are cocky. You're arrogant. A bunch of rich boys who daddy was a Dodger fan, moved you to L.A., you grew up there, and you think you're something special. That's fine. That's fine. We'll see how this year plays out. I'll enjoy it. I'll enjoy it from the sidelines. Okay? That's what I think. And now the last thing. Hard to get angry, hard to get mad, and then had a couple of sad downer stories. Then I got all pissed off. And then the last story is I'm I'm just gonna be honest. Okay, this is this is this is safe space. I'm just gonna be myself. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you people. I uh I feel pathetic. I feel pathetic. We're gonna hit the NCAA tournament. And I and I only want to talk about last night. Okay. That'd be Monday night. My LSU Tigers, for the first half of the first half, all right, for, I've done, this is the third time I've made that statement, by the way, today. The first half of the first half is the right way to say it. The first 10 minutes of the game, my LSU Tigers looked like the best team in the country. Okay. They were rolling on Michigan. They got four guys that I believe are going to play in the NBA, and I think they're the only team out there in the tournament that has that. And in the second half, the last 10 minutes, 
they just turned into iso ball, very selfish play, no passing, no no more pick and rolls, what they do better than every team in the country. Uh, frustrating way to end the half. Then, then they came out the second half, and they did the exact same damn thing. And they got beat. Michigan's a good team. Michigan's a real good team. Michigan wasn't the better team last night. Now, now maybe they would be the better team if they had livers, and maybe – Maybe they, they, they deserved that one seed. They absolutely deserved the one seed. I don't think they were underrated. I don't think they were misevaluated at all. I just thought we were the better team. And LSU played played like crap. Okay. Now that got me down. But that's nothing pathetic. All our teams have lost at some point in time, right? Losing's not that big of a deal, right? It doesn't make you feel good, but it sucks. It, it, it's okay. And then I then I flipped the channel. So it's the beauty of the tournament is there's a bunch of other games on. And that game's over with. I, f- I flip the channel. And I see Maryland. I see Maryland getting beat like a drum by Alabama. Now, my team losing sucks. But seeing the team you hate more than anyone else be good at something they've never been good at before in your life. It's just so frustrating. It's so defeating. It, it, I, I realized last night two things. One, there is a guy. And two, he very, very disappointed in me and just in my life. I, I don't know what it is. Alabama, not good enough for them to just dominate and beat the hell out of everybody in football. Oh, no. No, no, no. We're going to give them one of the best basketball teams of the year. I didn't need that. I didn't need it. That was the slap in the penis that I could have done without. But it happened. Such is life. Sometimes the sun is in your face, the wind is at your back, and and life is good. And and the others, the storm comes, you get thrown upon the rocks. And, and man, I felt like I was on the rocks last night. I could have used a drink on the rocks last night. But, uh, the NCAA tournament is ready to, uh, I guess, move into the next phase of the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight. Got a couple of days without games. I think there's two teams that I'm actually intrigued about left in the whole damn thing. I like chaos. I, I like I like upsets. I like underdogs winning. But this is not what I was looking for. It, all of the chalk that I cannot handle is winning. And all of the, I don't know. It's it's a strange tournament. My only request is that, and this Gary, this is something Gary and I've talked about several times on the show, maybe in the past. I don't I don't know how much we've said it lately. The uh, the people who who run college football need to be watching these tournaments, and they need to be understanding that we have to expand college football. You cannot use the argument that, well, they just can't win it. They can't win it all, so it doesn't matter. It, them winning a game would matter. So, that's that's it. I don't, I don't know what else to say. The NCAA tournament last night broke me. It broke me. I didn't need it. It broke me. And, and it hurt my feelings, and I didn't like it. And everybody was all upset about the bracket. And I don't give a damn about my bracket. I didn't care about the bets I lost. I just if I if LSU would have won and Bama would have lost, everything else could have just fallen around me. You know what? For a couple of minutes, I've been like, yeah, it's, life's not so bad. Sometimes we got things to smile at. And then I got Gary over here getting everything in the world he wants in this world. Just, just so frustrating. Anyway. I'm going to get out of here. Thank y'all so much for joining me. I appreciate it. I I think on Tuesdays, it's going to be my day to do the solo shows. So if you don't like listening just to me, I I promise you they won't all be whining and bitching like this. Uh, Probably all going to be a little bit of bitching, but not, not the whole thing. Come on, join in. I appreciate it. Gary and I appreciate you guys. The support that we've had has been great. The growth has been amazing. We love, you know, 
the the the, the interactions with y'all on Twitter. I'm at Chris B. Giannini. It, it, come on now, you can find it. I've had people complain. I can't spell Giannini. Come, on, dude, just go to our website and you can figure it out. You copy and paste. It's not that hard. Um, but yeah, we we do appreciate the support. It the internet's not always a terrible place, and I learned that you know over the last year. It is a place where I've gotten a lot of a lot of support, and uh, and I just want to say thanks, and uh, hope you guys are liking the content that we're putting out. We're working hard on it, and uh, we're gonna keep trying to uh, to grow this thing and to do it. Wednesday afternoon should be a uh, a live show with Gary and I. We can make the damn schedule happen. That was my fault Monday, and uh, and then we'll go from there. I'm gonna end the show now. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.